Hi, thanks for coming to the 2013 Spring Semester SOS second workshop of the semester. And we're going to do it today on lacto-fermentation, which is um, it's a centuries-old method of preserving food that involves using salt with whole or chopped up raw vegetables to create an environment that encourages growth of healthy bacteria. These healthy bacteria are often referred to as live active cultures. So this is really an easy method. If any of you have canned before or done any other kind of preserving and found it to be difficult, you're going to love this. <laughs> I uh, prepped up some stuff to begin with. What I'm making today, um, well, actually, I would like to read this quote from Sandor Katz, who I happen to be one of his groupies. The main difference between vegetables left to rot and those destined for delicious fermentation is usually salt. Vegetables ferment best under the protection of brine. Brine is simply water with salt dissolved in it. In some ferments, such as sauerkraut, the salt is used to draw the water out of the vegetables, thus creating intense vegetable juice brine. In other ferments, such as cucumber, a brine solution is mixed and then poured over the vegetables. Brine serves as a protection against the growth of putrefying microorganisms and favors the growth of desired bacteria, lactobacilli. The amount of salt you use, the slower the fermentation will be and the sourer, more acidic the resulting the ferment. With too much salt, however, no microorganisms can survive and fermentation will not occur. And that's from Sandor Katz's Wild Fermentation. Great book, go to the library, get it. I guarantee you're gonna wanna buy it. So you might just wanna go to Amazon and buy it. Um, or go to his website and get it. Okay, today we're gonna do kimchi kraut, which is my own word. Nobody else knows about it yet, <laughs> except <laughs> us. And um, I call it that because I don't follow recipes well. I originally did my sauerkraut like my mother did it, and her mother did it in a crock, and just did the cabbage and sometimes maybe some cranberries or some onions and maybe a little bit of caraway and worked at it and had a big crock of sauerkraut and got sick of it because it was just so much sauerkraut. And everybody's like, oh, sauerkraut again? And then I did a workshop with Sandor, and I chopped vegetables for him and everything, and he pointed out to me so simply, I mean, it's like, this is like, you wonder why you don't think of these things yourself, <laughs> that you don't have to do it like that. You can do one jar at a time, you know, and if you want to do a bunch of jars, but do them in smaller jars. Then you can be a little more creative with your um, recipe. And so I started to prep some vegetables here. I've got peppers and um, carrots. Cut them in any way you want. You can do them in little discs. You can do them in, in pieces. I did the, this in the uh, food processor, the cabbage. And I have some more cabbage here that we can cut up now. And uh, let's try to do this talking and cutting without any bloodshed. And, um, and you nothing fancy, just cut it up, just like you would. The thing is, if, if you're reading along with this uh, handout, and I may, I'm not really following it, is, uh, okay, we need clean, uh, clean glass jar, wide mouth, cutting board, and shop knife, or food processor, vegetables, and salt, that's it. Um, you can use cabbage, turnip, carrots, red or green peppers, radishes, onions, whatever you have access to. And that's another thing. We're making believe here today. We're, it's summer and, or fall, and we're bringing things in from the garden, and we're doing this for our winter's harvest. Because we're going to keep this stuff in our cellar or in our, you know, somewhere cool for the winter, and we'll be able to eat it all winter. And um, I don't use anything soft or mushy like summer squash or anything and with this. I try to keep the density of the of the vegetables kind of the same so that they they I've never tried actually doing anything with summer squash now this is where the kimchi pot comes in I did this at home so it wouldn't be too complicated I do one pot about you know you can this is all to taste this is for people to use their own minds to think and and and, and you've got a print out here to kind of have a guideline but that's all it is is a guideline I do one pot it's leaking. Woo, it's hot. I do one pot um, garlic, one pot, I use, I ferment jalapeno peppers from the summer and I have gallons of those, so I use those. I do one pot the jalapenos and then one pot of ginger and I put that in the food processor and make this kind of mushy, relishy kind of, and I do that, what did I do with my, uh, 
Hmm. Towel. The other towel. The flowered one. Mm -hmm. um, it's not flowered. It's striped. Um, I, I like at this stage the fine chopping because I find that it it mixes better with the coarse developed vegetables because where all the flavor is going to come from if you like a nice spicy flavor. If you don't like the spicy, you know, go easy on this stuff or eliminate the hot pepper altogether. You know, the garlic and the, and the, and the, the, um, the ginger is, the ginger gives a lot of nice flavor. So I do that up and you have to have yourself a nice bowl. You don't use metal. Um, stainless steel would be acceptable, but never use aluminum or any kind of that kind of metal. This should be glass or ceramic. Okay, so the first thing you do is you cut off the stem of your cabbage and put it aside. Then you chop your veggies so that they're in a really nice... Um, well, I'm going to do this onion and then we'll see from there. I'm going to see how much... Uh, I'm going to use... Okay, I'm going to use this bowl. Oh, you know what you could do? Yes, what could I do? I like this already. <laughs> She's going to do the decon. Um, here, uh, use that for the compost. Yeah. Bring the compost home for the chickens. And this, you want me to just peel it, am I right? <laughs> yeah, but be careful. That thing is, is brutal. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was going to peel the onion. Okay, while she's doing that, I'll peel the onion. That's a daikon, daikon onion, radish. Uh, radish. And, um, I just read today on, on uh, one of the web pages that does chickens that onions are poisonous to chickens. Oh, I gotta yeah. tell my chickens that. <laughs> hmm? Well, I should have told my dog that, but she's dead now. She didn't die from onions. She died from old age. She died from a very old age. So I'm gonna just chop up, uh, and like I said earlier to people before we started this whole thing, we were chatting, and size, and texture and everything is not a big deal. That's another thing I learned from Mr. Katz is that, um, and I give him all the credit, it doesn't make any difference. Just chop it. Don't, don't get anal about it. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, just make sure you don't cut your fingers. In other words, don't be like me. <laughs> everything has to be the same size. I, I, one of the farmer's potlucks I go to, somebody does this awesome kimchi, and I don't know how they cut their stuff, but it's in sizes from this to this. I mean, it's all kinds, but it's, it's still, you can pick up a piece of gnar on it like an apple, and it's so good. Okay, I'm going to put this into, um, okay, into my bowl here, because I'm looking, and I don't think we're going to fit much more than this. And this gets so much fun. And you'll see why you don't want to do too much more than this. I'd probably like a bowl maybe twice as big as this, mm -hmm. ideally. Or twice as big. Twice the size of this bowl, five, so that I could do twice as much, because I think that would be. Now, I on the printout, to handout, I do say that put in one tablespoon to the volume of a medium-sized head of cabbage. Now, that's kind of elusive I, <laughs> to most people. But I would say, seeing how I have a small head of cabbage, one tablespoon, and it's, it's in here. I've got still a half a cabbage almost here. And, you know, I, I, so I would say this is not too much more than, but you get used to this. This is something. Buy sea salt, kosher salt. I found very inexpensive. I wish I could afford Himalayan pink salt and everything else, but I'm not in that price bra that uh, income bracket. So I just go get the Gonzales sea salt, and it's like really cheap. And this is how I measure. That's yeah, a tablespoon. And I put that in, and then you start mixing that in. And I have washed my hands very, very well. I saw her do it, so did. And then I did it again after you saw me. Oh, you want to um? You want me to do it? Why don't you? Yeah, you take it off. Here's yeah. a, here's the little knife, and don't trust me with a big one. Um, well, I need to take the spot off a little easier. And then just do up enough so we've got some of this in for flavor. Do it maybe up like this, you know, okay. or however you want to do it. You know, like I said, chop anywhere that's comfortable. So. You start mixing this in. The point I'm doing right now is just simply getting the salt mixed in. 
and you do have a tendency to want to put more salt because that doesn't oh. seem like much salt. You say, oh, that doesn't, you know. Yeah. And I may put some more salt in, but you have to get to the taste test. And you can't get to that until you've tossed it a little and it's evenly distributed. And the taste test should simply be a little salty, like you'd eat your food. It's not like salty, you know. And I've made that mistake. I salt my food and it tasted to see if it needs salt. Oh. I'm in oh, trouble. <laughs> but the thing is, too much salt, as, as we read earlier in the, in the piece, is, is will, will kill even the lactobacilli. So then I... It's salty, but I'm going to put just maybe a teaspoon more. And now what we're going to do is start mixing. I know I don't need any more, so I'm not going to get too neurotic about getting that mixed in, because believe me, when we're done here, it's going to be mixed in. This is where the fun comes in. Now, if you have arthritis in your hands, this is therapy. Because just like you're kneading bread, you get in there and you squeeze and you squeeze and you pull it up from the bottom and you make sure it's getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And as you squeeze it, it's working the brine out of, well, it's making a brine. It's working the juices out of the vegetables, mixing it with the salt and creating a brine. And sometimes I think in these workshops, really you should do this like well ahead of time because it takes a minute to do it. So I got to think of all kinds of clever things yeah, to say. Well, so does anybody have any questions? This is a good time for so questions. Yes, yeah. can I taste that to see how salty it really is? Yeah. Yeah, I'll just put it in your hand, and then you've got then you're responsible for yourself. Thank you. <laughs> and as far as cleanliness goes with um, fermenting, and whether you're doing a, a kombucha or a, a water kefir or a, or a, any of these things. You have to be clean, but you don't have to be neurotic like you do with canning. Oh. You don't have to do these boiling water baths and all this other stuff because the bad bacteria are going to be overcome by the good bacteria. And one of the things I'm going to steal from Ken Sandor Katz, too, is that he mentions that you know, we see these uh, disinfectants, Lysol and such, oh, yeah. and it's 99.99%, you know, germ killing, it'll yeah. kill, you know, kill the 99, that many germs. Except that those 99.99%, those germs are probably the ones that are saving you from that 1% that you're not killing. Oh. Because most bacteria and fungus and yeasts and everything in our environment are good. It's, it's the bad ones, and this is where all of these problems are coming up with these flus and, mm -hmm. and you know, the, what is it, the antibiotics people take rather than build yes. their immune systems. And it's just, and it's the same with your soil. If you're an organic farmer, you know the first thing that you do is that you get an incredible amount of biomass in your soil. You get a living soil that's just breathing with, with life. And that life is going to sustain your plants. And then people say, well, what do you do for disease and insects? Well, you know, you deal with that when you get to it, and odds are you're going to get to a lot less of it if you've got a good soil to begin with. Just like with a healthy body, you tend to get sick less than. So. You want to throw this in there? Sure, that's good. That's enough. Because we just want to. And I did some different sizes. I'm being creative. We are being creative. <laughs> yes. I've put apples in, yes. I have used apples. I experiment. Um, I would think mushrooms. I would put mushrooms in. I would try mushrooms. But this is, again, the reason I, I love this method of using, doing a small amount. Because if you mess it up and it's really not that great, you know, it's not going to be it's not going to be bad, so you can't eat it. It should maybe not be as you say, oh, I'm not going to do it. just like any recipe. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not going to do it that way next time because it's it's, you know. And don't you find that most of the like what, like the wintry vegetables, except for like peppers, those aren't really winter. But don't you think that really the wintry type vegetables? Yeah, are the better, root, or am I miss the root vegetables, the this. root vegetables, right, the yeah. hard ones. Yeah. I would be more apt. Radish. I would. I don't know about anybody else. Yeah, radishes, turnips. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got it, Julia. Yeah, you can, you can experiment. You can experiment. Now, um, 
like I was saying earlier to some of the girls, now see this is starting to get to a point where, see there's a little bit of juice coming out, but I want more than that. I want it to get nice and juicy because we're going to pack this in the jar and we're going to pound it down there and it's a riot because you, the way you pack it with your fist and you get it down in there, it's, and you open up the jar and you think, oh, I got, is this going to be enough for a meal? And then you find out it's like a bale of hay. You just keep opening it and opening it and opening it. And it keeps coming and coming because it's packed in there so tight. So it's a lot of vegetables in a quart jar. So you're just, because I was chopping and you, you just are kneading up the vegetables. You put the salt in. You haven't done the, the garlic mix oh, yet, have you? Oh, thank you. That, well, see, Julia's here. This is why she's here. Well, this I'm not going to put until the end. I for something. <laughs> now, I can't remember. Did I, t I told you guys about yes, this, yes. right? Okay, because I did talk about this yes, before. One part garlic, one part jalapeno, one part uh, ginger, and, and, and to taste, whatever you in like. In a traditional kimchi, that they used a little red peppers. This would be red, but I use what I've got. Oh, God, it smells so good. If you want to pass this around and smell it. Pass it around and smell it. Oh, oh smell that. No, you're smelling, you're smelling the sticky cob you cabbage. Smell this. Oh, I want to dab that behind my oh, ears. Wow. Yeah, yeah well, a little burn like heck. That's good stuff. Mm. My husband would came home smelling like that. He wouldn't be safe. Mm. I'll tell you, if I do tend to put that in at the end and kind of stir it in rather than do this because there is those hot peppers. I don't know if you've yeah, ever you. dealt with hot peppers, but need I say more? They get. Now, you said those peppers you had done. Those have been already been fermented. If you were going to use, you could use. You can use fresh. Uh, you use just, you, no, don't use anything oh, from the store. Oh, use okay. a fresh pepper. Oh, fresh. Use a fresh pepper. Oh. This is an example of the other kind of fermenting that's on the, the worksheet, which is a brine um, ferment. A brine ferment is one tablespoon. Again, this is all variable. Depends on the time of the year and, and who you are and what you're working with and what you come up with and what becomes your way of doing it. But one tablespoon of salt to one cup of water. And you make a brine. This is uh, turmeric. And I just kind of figured I'd, you know, I said, well, I've got to bring something in to show them. And I didn't want to bring one of my drooly things that I had at home that were leaking and stuff because it would have been too messy. So I just threw this together this morning and that's all I did. I put the brine on the turmeric. This will go in the pantry and I'll forget about it. And this will turn into pickled turmeric. And how long? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I would, if I was doing cucumbers or string beans, I'd check them in three days. This time, but that I usually do in the summer, so it's warmer. So I would say within a week it should show really good signs of fermenting and then from there on it just gets more and more sour because the more and more and then you just it, and when it reaches a point that you like the taste put it in the coolest place you've got either a refrigerator or a cold cellar um, you know some places cold is what stops fermentation at that point am I right so you've got that or slows it down significantly exactly right? right so that you maintain the flavor that you like the best by putting it in the coldest part of your refrigerator Right, but it, 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 I've found, I mean, I've got this one here I did on, um, well, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute because there's something else I want to point out about that one. Now, I really would do this a little bit more at home. Do you want to do something else and you want me to do this? No, this is, this is going to be fine because, um, see, I can pick this up now. Yeah. But at home, really I'm neurotic, and I just, I would, I would be, I, I don't know how many faces you've got on the camera there, but you probably have some interesting facial expressions. But I'm, oh, I really get into it. I get home, and it's therapy, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, <laughs> and the reason this is not a workshop workshop and a demonstration is obvious. You know, now it really gets obvious. Because we're going to pack this in here now, and I usually put about, you know, a couple of handfuls, about a third full, and then pack pack, pack, you're going to push and push and push and push and push because you want every little bit, see? Do you need a towel? Yeah, there you go. You want all the air out of there. Uh -huh. And by doing this, too, you're releasing more and more of the juice. juice. Yeah, it, and this is, and making faces is very important at this point <laughs> because that makes, that adds to the flavor. <laughs> And you can also, this, what's good for me is when you visualize an enemy in there. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Get your question. Yeah, see, I don't have any enemies, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh! <laughs> Do 
But it, and you can see how pretty it gets. I mean, it's really got a lovely, lovely complexion. And just keep adding and punching and and like I say, this is great for arthritis because it gives you that little bit of physical therapy that you need that you may not be getting because you're babying those hands that hurt all the time. Plus you're covering up that nice salt and all that nice vegetable juice. See how, ju I see how juicy it's getting already. Just even punching it down gets it more. Oh yeah, it's it's just I don't know. It's like a little kid, you know. I mean, it's it's kid. It, this is stuff. This is great to do with kids too, yeah. because it teaches them about um, microbiology. It teaches them about food. It teaches them about creativity. It teaches them about obeying their mother. <laughs> or grandmother. Or grandmother. Or grandmother. Well, I'm not so fortunate. My my two grandchildren that I have near me, the rest of them, the other eight don't live near me, I'm so obedient that I don't have, they just, they'll do anything for me. But see how the water, can anybody, see how the water's rising up? Yeah, yeah they're really and getting You will always water. keep all of that water in there. That water's gonna stay in there because, as I said earlier, and what's on the handout, this is an anaerobic ferment. And that means that there's no oxygen in it. And being away from or without, in Latin, and A or N. And I did one, well, it was, no, it wasn't this one. I did one, and I was doing this, and I had so much juice. I don't know if the vegetables were extra juicy. And I ended up, I had a, I mean, it was like I had to pour some off, and I ended up with a, a pint of juice with just a few flecks of vegetables in it. And I've left that now to ferment, and it's fermenting. And I'm thinking it's going to make a good stock. So it's an experiment, you know? I think that's a great idea. I never throw the waters away from almost anything that I do, whether if I cook veggies in, yeah. I have all, I, I will actually freeze them if I don't have a use. Really? And then I make yeah, soup I do too. out of all my vegetable stocks. I might reduce them a little bit so it's not so much space, but oh my god. I, I've got the clear plastic containers, yeah. and you didn't hear me say plastic, I don't no. use plastic. <laughs> I don't use plastic. But I've got the clear plastic containers in the, in the, in the freezer, and like yeah. Julia, I'll you know, have this much broth and I'll put it on. One will be yellow, one will be green, one will be another color, and it's like those sand Layers. things, you know? Yeah, as long as it's a vegetable. Okay, it's now vegetable this brings soup. up, it's phenomenal. where's my little knife? This little knife is now going to take the cabbage stem, clean it up a little bit, and we are going to make a plug here for this. I there's different this ways. I love this part. There's different ways to anchor your vegetables, but for kraut. See, I'm, ah, I'll get it on the towel. See? Oh, see it? Can you get that from over there? Can you see it? Isn't that cool? And that is anchoring our kraut. Now, in the, where is it? Can you point out to me where I've got this? No, you can take the cabbage stem right there, five. Okay, now you can take the cabbage stem and trim it to fit the jar. Um, to get the, you can also use a plastic bag of brine or a rock. And it's to improvise. So I grabbed this on the way out. This isn't very fancy. This is home, Susan's, Susan's uh, I call it um, flower child redneck gardening and cooking. <laughs> it's kind of a fusion. And I just took a plastic bag, filled it with, actually I put water in, it's not brine. You should use brine in case it leaks. But I was so confident it wasn't gonna leak that I used water. <laughs> But you should use brine, and you fill the plastic bag, you put it down, and it'll hold it down there. What I did is I just twisted it and put the thing on and cut off the extra, oh, you know. So you but I mean, you can do it, if you're a neat person, you can do it much nicer than that. Hmm. Um, the rocks, I didn't grab one, but I get those river rocks, the nice, shiny, yeah. smooth ones, and get, make sure they fit. Put one of those in, and then when you put the cap on, it pushes everything down. And then you do it just fingertip, just like you do for canning, mm -hmm. just fingertips. Not, uh, uh, you know. Oh, wait a minute, we didn't put in a, 
we gotta put this all back. Oh, do. Do. oh, and I, I forgot after I told you. I know it, huh? I told her, and then I forgot. I put it down. Well, that's all right. We'll get another demonstration. That was so much fun. That's adding more volume to it. Yeah. Um, and see if you're home. This is the kind of stuff you do. I mean, you're gonna <laughs> find the knife. Okay. Now we put this in, and this is going to be pretty spicy. This is a nice spicy mix. I put. And is that about a cup full? Yeah. It's a good cup, I think. Looking at it. Yeah. You, you'll get as you make it. You'll 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 know. You'll know. And that's why I say make small batches at first. For the viewers, what is, what is that again? This. Yeah. This is the um, what makes it kimchi kraut. This is one pot ginger, one pot hot pepper and one pot garlic. garlic and I used my fermented hot jalapenos because that's what I had but you know you'd use whatever you had you could use pepper flakes actually I think a lot of the recipes just call for pepper flakes but it's that kimchi flavor that that's what gives the flavor and again I stir that in versus squeeze it in and I have squeezed it in believe me that's why I'm stirring it in because of the hot pepper on your skin right yeah you get any little cuts or anything yeah. in your skin and or you forget and you touch your nose or you rub your eye you're in big doo-doo that's also good for your arthritis yep the capsaicin is really great you just when you're done with this then you just go rub all your joints and <laughs> and your hands i actually i should put my hands in at the end just to get enough on to to be healing for my joints Mm. Oh, I love it. It's like, how can you wait long enough for it? And it's so addictive, you know? And I eat this stuff. I don't know if we should put this on film, but I eat this stuff. I have chicken, so I eat a lot of eggs. Um, I believe that a human being can live on kale and eggs, myself, personally. But um, I'll do my crispy fried eggs. I get the cast iron pea and red hot and a little olive oil and then crack the egg in so it's it gets all brown and crispy and then I flip it over, do it over easy, throw it in the plate and I put a lot of this on top and some alfalfa sprouts and it's like, oh, it's so good. It's that just, sound good, it? it's oh, weird. No. <laughs> is she drooling? I am, she's not. I think that sounds really now, good. Your son is the one that likes this stuff. Do you eat, eat it? Um, I well, that's what I'm thinking. I, I, I'm going to try this myself. Wouldn't it? Oh, you could do an omelet with that. Yes. Yeah. And some people say, like someone asked me recently on the Facebook page, you know, should I can it? Can I can this? And I'm like, well, it's kind of you redundant. I mean, you're, you're doing this to preserve the vegetables, and you're doing this to develop more uh, nutrition as well. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that grow in here that are good for you. Now my hands are touching it, but not like as much as they would have been. And um, so, yeah, you can do it, but why would you? You know, why would you waste the time? Why would you bother? You're going to take the crispiness out. You're going to, the whole point in making a kraut is, is gone. Um, but it's like in, in, in Lithuania, we, the, we, it, they take half cabbage and half kraut and cook it together and make fried cabbage and, and mushrooms with wild mushrooms. And they use the kraut. So they cook it, you know. And then we have that. At, for one of our Christmas dishes, for our Christmas Eve dishes. Oh yeah, this can last a year. This lasts and lasts and lasts and lasts. As long as you keep it under the water. I've, I've read of people, not that I personally kept it that long because I eat it, but yeah, I, it doesn't last. I've read people that have eaten it. They said, I thought it went bad and I forgot about it and, and left it and then they opened it a year later and they said it was awesome. Now this is what you call the kimchi kraut. Which is my word. Right. But could you, like, this is the same thing when you make like those dilly beans? No. No? When you do the dilly beans or you do dill pickles, kosher dill pickles, you use the brine method. The brine, okay. That's With different. cucumbers, you pick the smaller cucumbers because you don't want the big old seeds and everything in them. And you pack them in your jar with dill. I do, this is how I do my, you put whatever you like in them. But I put dill, preferably a nice fresh dill from the garden with a head and leaves and everything on it. Garlic and hot peppers. I like the hot peppers in it too. Mm. 
and I packed that all together and put the brine on it. Brand Three days in the summertime, you got hot sour dill pickles that people go, oh my goodness, how did you do this? Where did this come from? <laughs> I mean, people really do get impressed. And they, oh, you put a grape leaf in too, or you can use cherry leaves or oak leaves, but traditionally it's, it's a grape leaf because there's tannic acid in it. And the tannic acid keeps, acts like an alum, keeps the crispness into the, to the vegetables. Which I've often thought, why not line the jar with these? You know, I haven't tried it yet, cause, but I keep grape leaves in the, ref in the refrigerator. I dry them and just, and then I just reconstitute them so I can use them in the winter. So here we are, back again where we were. And back with our friend here. And there. You just love the cabbage top. Yeah. I don't remember, I don't know. That's to keep it under the water, yes. That's to anchor it under the brine. No, I eat it. I eat it. If it's, if it's moldy or something, no. But I mean, because you will get mold on, 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 on these things. Like when you do it in the, in the crock, now you put, you put a plate on it and then you take and you put a rock on, you put a towel over it to keep, you know, debris and insects or what, what have you out of the crock and then you put a, a clean rock on it to anchor it. And when you pick up that cloth, there's always mold on it. You have to rinse it out and, and, and redo it. it. But it, it, and you skim it. It's on the top. It's, it's, it's not a bother. If, you get, if one happens to be on one of the pickles you take out, you rinse it off. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it's not a bother. <laughs> I, I cannot prevent that way. <laughs> well, see, I, I grew up that way. I mean, it's okay, it's dinner time. Okay, sissy, go down the cellar, get the pickles, get the this, get the that, you know, and you get out with a little basket and get everything to, for supper. Now, ain't that yeah. pretty? It is. Beautiful. Gorgeous. So I brought a couple of other little jars just in case there was extra, and um, which shows to go. Yeah, I'm not going to um, submerse these. I'm not going to put anything in to anchor them because you can just somebody can take them home and it can do that at home. Underneath the line, instead of using the, she want to explain again. She I'm missed. Sorry, I did miss that. I she apologize. missed the thing about the bag. Want to explain that again? Who was that? Me. We. I oh, I was going to. I was going to give you a lecture about paying attention in class. <laughs> <laughs> My boss called. I had to. <laughs> this is just a. a um, I'm going to lie and say there's brine in there. It's water, but. This, you put brine in a, a plastic bag and you put it in. I just twisted the bag, pushed it down to anchor it below the brine and then pulled the, um, the top over and I just got it on there and then cut it off. And if you can be more clever about that, then by all means do it. What I'm looking for, and if anybody finds it, I've been, whenever I'm in the craft stores, I'm looking for like a lens shaped piece of glass that'll fit in here. Uh, that you, can read. you know what I mean? You know how crafty stores have all that kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. If you ever see that, I think that would be the coolest thing. And then that would be, and then you could reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. Where she said if you had a, um, like a river stone, she does the same thing. Put it in a plastic bag and it's going to be the same Well, size. I don't even. I just stick it. Oh, I thought you said you put it in a bag. You and could. You, and it's so going to be about the same. Keep going I put it through the dishwasher there. between uses, so. But like I said, the, the cleanly, the river stones are very, very, um, I got it, them at the craft store. I was a little reluctant when I first did it. I was thinking, oh, I wonder what the, you know, you never yeah. know what they got on things from stores. Awesome. But, I mean, I, what could they have on a rock, you know? <laughs> Go to Hoshnick, there's lots of rocks. Yeah. There. But see, I just love, look at, she just got like little jars she saved. Does that look beautiful? You can make this stuff and like give it away for presents. Oh, yeah. I do. I mean, it's like, and this. I mean, there's another method you can use. You can do the same thing as this with the with the sprinkling on with eggplant. And then when the eggplant's done and you're going to serve it, you put it for a day or so. You cover it with olive oil, and it's a it's a it's a it's an antipasto dish. That's it's my friend from Italy does it. And it's, she's, if she knew I was telling her, oh my God, this is going to be on TV. <laughs> Actually, she doesn't do it that way. Her method is different, so. But um, she does, she's got a, a, a gourmet shop up, up in, uh, near Boston, and she sells all that kind of stuff. But, you know, just, and then I brought my little, 
handy dandy thing if you don't, you know, like hands, you can use a spoon, but why use a spoon when you got hands? You can use one of those old time potato mashes too around. Yeah. Sure, as long as it's stainless steel. Wood. Oh, the wood one. The yeah. old time ones, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get creative. I mean, they have kraut smashes. I mean, for the for the Crocs, they used to have these wooden things that you bashed your your your, your stuff with and everything. But so if it's a little too little ones you just didn't, you wouldn't worry about it breaking it down. I the thing is is that I, I, I what I'm say, saying is I am not anchoring this down, but I'm saying that I'm not anchoring it down because whoever takes it home can anchor it down. And and you know what? Quite honestly, if it's they've got enough fluid on it and, it, and oh. I forgot about the burping. You've got to burp them every day. Oh, every day. And you always keep them on a plate. Like, I put mine on top of the refrigerator. Excuse me? Did you say every day? Well, I don't do it every day, but I tell everybody to do it every day. But it, they, do, they do get a lot of pressure in them because of the, um, the gases that are built up inside from the, from the fermentation process builds gases. So there's pressure inside the jaw. So you'll get leakage coming out. So it kind of drools. So you, you put it on a plate. And if you find that it went crazy, it drooled too much, oh my god, I don't have enough water, put a little water on it. Put it brine if you want, but just make sure it's covered. You know, it's, it's, you can just add more water at that point. And um, I'm just going to put that in, in this jar because there's only a little bit of water left. I, didn't, I can't hear what you're saying, Corey. They have, uh, they sell lids. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, just like when you're doing the beer and, and the wine and stuff. Yeah, the, oh, you go on the internet, you find all kinds of gadgets. Because I do a, a Facebook page and I do a lot of food stuff and I'm with all these canning people and all these, you know, preppies and all these people that are, you know, putting things up and saving things and doing things. and. And boy, do they sell some stuff. You can, I mean, you can really be a, a, a homesteader and spend some serious money on gadgets. I mean, it's, it's amazing when. But isn't that the purpose of being homesteaders? No, <laughs> all the gadgets. But these poor people, you know, you gotta understand though, they, they, you know, they're over there taking care of their cows and their pigs and their chickens and their geese and they wanna stay home, so they do this stuff on the internet to make money, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like six of one, half a dozen of another, you know, who, who am I to? You know, but um, so I'm just going to just put that in there. We've got another cover someplace, and I think that's about it now. Um, and like I say here, good luck with your new skill. Now that you can see how easy it is to make kimchi, you can have vegetables from your garden all year. I recommend that you get Sandor Katz Wild Fermentation from your local library and try your hand at other microbial adventures because it's it's fun, it's fun, and now my arthritis is much better. Got it? I'm just, I'm going to tell you, Google it, girls, Google that. Thank you. So many tips. Make dilly beans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got her on film. We went to a workshop at the, at the. Oh, yeah, that's right. At that's the right. NOFA, at, at the NOFA. I get a, I get a video of her doing, um, for just a little clip, because I did it on my cell phone, of her. She was, <laughs> she was sitting up in front and, um. Real Pickles, Dan, what's his last name? I don't remember, but he's off Actually, he's, so. he's ta the business is now a co-op. It's oh, not a business it? anymore. And uh, he's up from West in Western Mass, and he did a, a dilly bean fermentation workshop some years ago. And he says, OK, I, I need volunteers. You should have seen her shoot out of the chair. <laughs> you never think anybody can move that fast. She really, and she got I up like there, that. and she did a good job. She did a great I get, job. I get to take home my jar of dilly beans. Yeah. Garlic and dill and salt and water. And That's you, all it you is. Make them now? I have made them in the air. They're phenomenal. It, it's, and it's so easy. You can do. He also did cucumbers with them too. He did some cucumbers. Did he? No, we passed them out. Oh, yeah, had done them already. And anybody that doesn't know about uh, time exchange here in South Coast, um, Massachusetts, you can go to exchangetime.org and look into it. It's an hour exchange. You deposit hours and you can, um, you can um, whatever it is, take hours out. And um, it's new and it's awesome and it's a way to get to know people and it's a way for like myself, a single senior citizen, to get 
things done that I can't do. If something breaks, what am I going to do? It's like I don't have the money to fix it, so it stays broken. But with this, I mean, I do, I do a workshop for SOS, who uh, will be a member of the Time Exchange as well. Clubs and organizations can join. Um, so I'll get hours for this, for every hour I put in to do this. And I'll, um, I did a potluck at my house to introduce the Time Exchange, and I had hours for that. Um, I teach someone about permaculture, I can give them hours for that. So it's like, it's, it's a beautiful thing. So I can get my roof done, or my gut is cleaned, or, you know, so chicken coop shoveled out. There's a list of um, needs that people have, and then there's a list of... Right. On the, on the website, they have um, requests and offers, I think is the way they phrase it requests an office and every it's new so it's it's kind of a slow start not everybody's put down their requests an office they've joined their name is there but you really don't know what they're there for they've got to go in there and, and if you do decide to join participate as much as you can because it's got to get rolling once it gets rolling then you know it's like anything else it'll it's get a hour, life of its own it's an hour for hour in other words um, there's no money exchange and there's no monetary value placed if you donate an hour you've banked an hour to spend with someone else so if I, for example, tutored astronomy and I tutored your child for astronomy for an hour, then I banked that and you spent an hour that you had banked. And that's how it works. So, and it can be anything. It can be like, like the time exchange. It can be as simple as I have a car and I'm willing to give someone a ride to the that's doctor. Exactly. You can read to old that, people whatever. or to people that don't right. want to read, anybody. Mm -hmm. can, um, if you're a great body, anything that you do that's something. volunteer, and it, it is a good thing to encourage people to join. The Audubon Society belong, uh, joined. There's another group that joined, and what it does is it encourages people to join these organizations and volunteer because they're getting something back now. And, and in our society, we're trained to do things for something back. And we're trying to untrain that, you know. And by doing this, it becomes easier and easier for people to give of themselves openly and easily without expecting anything in return, even though you will be. But the more you do it, the more you find. There's some people that don't even want their hours. But, um, and if you don't want your hours for any reason, you can donate them to anybody in the time exchange. Yes, if so someone else is a senior citizen that needs eight hours worth of work and they don't have it, and you've got a few to donate, you can. So you can donate easy. it to yeah. somebody else. It's very, very, and it's fluid. It's a very fluid thing. I mean, we're still building it and learning and, and you know, trying to come up with ideas and Do thoughts. You know when and the next meeting is going to be for everyone else? I don't know. There's a board meeting tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon, Go and on the website. I, I, we'll, I'll, I'll know after that. Go on the website. I'm sure they'll say it, but they are having introductory meetings for people. Right, and you can host an introductory meeting at your home and invite friends, and you can bank hours on that. That's what I did. I had a potluck, and it was great. I had all women, you know, old friends, new friends, everybody gets to know each other, and um, I didn't feel uncomfortable because they didn't have people I really didn't know, you know, and, and worry about, well, they're going to see the beehives underneath my, my, <laughs> my, uh, my potch, you know, my hey, they came buffet. The beehives. the beehives are stuffed under the buffet, you know, it's like, you know, it's the way I live. <laughs> so, anyway, but thank you all for coming and... Um, Thank you. Good job. Thank Good job. You Thank you. I'm so happy. I'm so happy because this is really important stuff that people have to know about.